day one of this unprecedented six-day strike action and for thousands of junior doctors in England 2024 begins where 2023 left off on the picket line. This was the scene in central London this morning as it was outside hospitals around the country such as here in Bristol. Personally how are you feeling about taking this action? Well personally uh, I'd you know, I'd rather the government come and negotiate. You know, as a doctor, we'd rather go and treat patients. We don't want to take industrial action, but we've suffered so much in terms of pay erosion. All we want is full pay restoration. In other words, a 35% pay rise to make up for previous below inflation rises. An extra 3% on top of the average of nearly 9% received last year was being discussed before talks broke down. And so this dispute drags on, eliciting yet more warnings. The charity Age UK claimed it would be difficult to guarantee safe and effective care for everyone, given the timing and duration of the strike. A time when hospitals have been facing sharp rises in cases of flu. NHS leaders in England say they have contingency plans in place for this, with resources focused on the most urgent and emergency care. But that comes, of course, at a cost to other health services. The last three-day junior doctor strike in England resulted in more than 80,000 operations and appointments being cancelled and rescheduled. And that figure this time is set to be much higher. And the impact already is noticeable, says the body which represents NHS organisations. Well, we're hearing from certain parts of the country that it's exacerbating issues around the discharge of patients from as it were, the, the back door of the hospital. And of course, then that impacts the front door of the hospital and the weights that people have got to have an A&E, which ultimately impacts ambulance response times. So what we're hearing is it's increasing those pressures, uh, which ultimately does, of course, um, lead to, to, to real issues around patient safety. Someone's just walked past us now and, and said to you, get back to work. Um, are you worried that public support for your actions as the sort of magnitude of their cancelled operations and appointments sinks in might begin to wane? You know, I'd like to apologise to anyone who feels this way, but this has been occurring even before industrial action has taken place. You know, the, the NHS has been in crisis. But as you can see in the picket line, we've had multiple you know, support from, you know, as you can see right now, the cars are beeping, showing support. The public know the truth. The patients know the truth that doctors are undervalued and it's within the government's hand and responsibility to stop the strike action. The government says it won't negotiate while strikes are ongoing. So there are no plans to meet uh, union leaders in the next week in the diary? Well, it is up to them to call off the strikes. You know, they decided, they picked this week, uh, which we all know is one of the busiest weeks in the NHS's diary. We have coronavirus, we have flu, we have norovirus increasing. They picked this week uh, to call this industrial action. Still come calls for both sides to return to talks immediately. I think my members, I think the public, I think all the people who work in the NHS would kind of say to both sides, look, this is not a time for worrying about about your pride, about standing on ceremony. Actually, if either the BMA or government was to do something to enable talks to start, I think the public would be incredibly grateful. And, and to be honest, there's no reason why that can't happen you know, now, this evening, tomorrow. But there is little sign of any such movement. In Northern Ireland, junior doctors will soon vote on action, while in Wales, in 12 days' time, another junior doctor strike begins. Well, the co-chair of the BMA's junior doctor committee, Dr Vivek Shredbedi, joins me now from Manchester. Thank you so much for joining us. I just wanted to start on that BMA letter tonight, which said that it was astonishing that insufficient planning had happened at some trust. What should NHS England's response be to that? So I think the main thing the letter is trying to get across is that we're trying to work with the NHS and have worked with them uh, over the last eight rounds of strike action to make sure we're addressing any patient safety issues or staffing issues that crop up. Where, but when that process isn't being engaged back with us, it makes it more difficult. And all we want to do uh, is ultimately 
you know, again, offer that's acceptable to our members to reverse the pay cuts that we've had. Unfortunately, strike action is the only language that the government seems to understand. Uh, but we want that strike action to be uh, as smooth as possible. Of course, it disrupts uh, elective activity, but we want it to be uh, as smooth as possible. And that's why we've wanted to work with the NHS to, to provide this level about, of safety. So it's just, just talking about a bit some of that disruption when that, isn't that reciprocated we're back seeing. To us. Sorry to cut across, you're just talking about some of that disruption. We're seeing one hospital's declared a critical incident. There's significant waits in A&E, one department's waiting 11 hours to be seen. How responsible do you feel for what is already happening right now? So waits of 11 hours are actually less than waits of more than 24 hours that we're seeing across A&Es on days without strike action. Uh, in the introduction to this uh, piece, there was a, a message that said that 80,000 uh, appointments were disrupted because of our strike action in December. Well, our strike action so far has caused a disruption of roughly 1.2 million appointments. In the year 22-23, when largely there was no doctor strike action at all, there were more than 12 million hospital appointments that had to be uh, cancelled and hopefully rescheduled. But where is the government or anyone doing anything about that when we have people like the Royal College of Radiology saying that we're even failing our cancer care patients because we don't have a workforce that's able to treat them? So all we want to do is to restore the value of being a doctor, to reverse the pay cuts that doctors like myself and the ones that I have represented uh, ha have faced over the past 15 years. For doctors who are paid £15.50 an hour to be paid just over £20 an hour so that we can keep them here Rather than, them, rather than them fleeing to places like Australia or New Zealand. I just wonder how you feel today, because as a doctor, you went into the profession to help people. And this is arguably one of the worst times of the year. That is what the health secretary said as well. This is a really difficult time. So how does it sit with you that you're not able to help people? So it's a difficult decision to go on strike for any doctor at any time of the year. I, I wish we didn't have to be on strike. I wish we didn't have to strike at all. Uh, but in fact, we've had to because the government has simply not listened to us. In fact, before we had any strike action, we called for the government to meet us to talk about pay and the effects that repeated pay cuts have on our workforce. But they ignored us. Uh, but, but Victoria then, Atkins you know, has said today she wants a fair action. and reasonable solution to end the strikes once and for all. So it sounds like she's making a deal. So why won't you come to the table? So we never left the table. We had a series of negotiations in uh, November and early part of December, and we had a pre-agreed deadline from both sides. And when we reached that deadline, the offer that was on the table, the average 3%, would have still been a real terms pay cut for many doctors. That's why our committee unanimously decided to reject that offer and to call for further strike action. Now, we called for this set of strike action almost a month ago. And in that time, we've heard Victoria Atkins say that that actually wasn't the final offer and there was a further offer to be made. But it's been a month and we've still not seen that further offer. All we've ever wanted is an offer that's credible that we can put to our members uh, that they would hopefully accept to bring this dispute to an end. Now, if there is an offer that could have been that, why was that not presented? We could have avoided this set of strikes and all future strikes.